Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, having me speak today. Um, Ergo Tools is uh, it's an online uh, application. It's a web application that we've developed uh, through OCAL uh, that just puts together some very commonly used uh, ergonomics tools for any type of work. Um, for office work, for any sort of assembly line work, uh, any type of job that you can think of, there's a tool in Ergo Tools that you can use to help evaluate it. I'm going to focus a little bit on the, the office part of it and uh, more specifically uh, the, uh, the ROSA tool today. Uh, ROSA is a, a project that I worked on uh, back in 2012 and have kind of constantly developed to, to make it something that's a little bit uh, of a, a standard for, for doing office ergo assessments, but we'll, we'll get into that. So we all know what these are. We know what an MSD is, a musculoskeletal disorder. Uh, it's any time that you have an injury to the soft tissues of your body or, or your bones, or your joints. And obviously there are, there are huge financial implications, but even more importantly, a lot of human suffering that goes along with these. At the end of the day, we want everyone to go home healthy and safe while they were productive at work. So having good tools is, a, is an essential part of this to, uh, to make sure we can evaluate jobs to determine if they're safe or not. When we're looking at the hazards uh, surrounding uh, the workplace, we're looking primarily at force, repetition, uh, and postures. And then the interaction of all of these with the work environment. So if there's any issues with uh, the temperature, uh, being exposed to vibration, uh, what type of jobs you're doing in sequence, all those things factor into our MSD risk. And when we're looking at uh, evaluating these jobs, there's a lot of different uh, tools out there. So if you have taken an ergonomics course in the past or you've been exposed to uh, any sort of uh, reports that feature uh, ergonomics uh, assessments in them, there's, there's a lot of different ways to assess things. And in the past, they've typically been pen and paper type checklists or they've been uh, desktop applications. So what we wanted to do was come up with a, a website that you could easily access from your phone, uh, from your laptop, from your desktop, and, and get these, uh, these assessments done. So Ergo Tools right now has six different commonly used ergonomics tools in it. It has uh, the rapid upper limb assessment, the rapid office strain assessment, the maximum acceptable effort equation, uh, the Romert rest allowance, strain index, and the NIOSH lifting equation. And if you visit ocow.on.ca slash ergo tools, uh, you'll be able to see them all there from your phone or from your, your laptop. Now, these are typically aimed at individuals who have a little bit of knowledge in ergonomics, but what we have been doing uh, recently in the Hamilton Clinic is going in, meeting with joint health and safety committees and teaching them how to use these tools. And then it, it serves as a nice way to do like a screening database of, of all your workplace jobs. It's always good to have kind of a, a level of quantification when you're talking about risk and then you can actually, you know, measure the impact of any changes that you make. So I'll just go through a few of the other tools before we get into the, the office stuff. Uh, the strain index is one of our tools that's in Ergo Tools. Uh, it's primarily used for repetitive upper extremity type tasks. The uh, MAE equation was developed by Dr. Jim Popman, and that is a, an assessment of repetitive work as well to determine based off of the duty cycle of your task, uh, what's an acceptable effort level. The rapid upper limb assessment is a, a really well-tested, well-developed tool that was, uh, I think 1993 was when it first came out. But the RULA gives you a, a quantification of, you know, do we need to look at this job any further? Uh, is this job okay for now? Uh, do we have to monitor it for future uh, changes in our workplace? The Romert rest allowance uh, determines if, based off of the demands of your cycle, do you have enough uh, rest time? Uh, we're currently working on a new fatigue prediction uh, module that we're going to integrate into Ergo Tools, uh, and that should be ready by the end of the summer. And then finally, the NIOSH lifting equation, which tells you what the acceptable uh, weight limit is for, for a lift that somebody is doing. So uh, in this case here, you can see it's got the... Uh, I can't find my laser beam. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, it, it, that will turn colors based off of if something is acceptable or not. And then finally, uh, ROSA. 
So I'm going to get a little bit in depth here with Rosa because I, I really do believe this is a, one of the better ways to manage off, office ergonomics because it is a quantifiable way. It's a repeatable way. Um, you can have different people do the assessment and be relatively certain that you're getting the same answer. Uh, it's even been tested to get people to do their own self-assessments. So Rosa, it's a, it's a simple tool, takes about 10 minutes to go through, and it gives you a 1 to 10 score that represents the level of risk in the office. And through some research, we determined that if you get a 5 or higher, there's a greater risk of having uh, reported discomfort. So it was developed at the University of Windsor. Uh, it was primarily based off the CSA standards for office ergonomics, and it bins the risk factors into uh, risk factors related to the chair, uh, to the, uh, the monitor, the telephone, uh, the mouse, and the keyboard. And the way it works is there's, there's groups of risk factors where you can say my chair is too high, too low, too high. Only one of those can, can happen at a time. And then you can also add on additional risk factors like there's no space under the desk or it's not adjustable. So the way it works is it's a little bit of battleship. You get a score. Uh, and you go along your, your different axes and you end up with uh, a score of 1 to 10. So to test this out, uh, this was uh, the, the first experiment we did to develop ROSA and, and to validate it. We had uh, 72 office workers uh, that uh, we recruited for this study. And each, uh, each worker uh, was assessed in their workplace and given a discomfort questionnaire. And we compared uh, the, the ROSA scores against discomfort. Now, that's, uh, that's all well and good, but we wanted to make sure that this was a reliable tool to use as well. So what we did was had 14 different workstations uh, assessed by three people at the same time, and then we compared their scores to see what type of uh, reliability we had there. But then we also did another little experiment where we had people assess the same office with the same person in the same posture uh, once a week for four weeks to determine if they, they were reliably assessing it uh, through intra-rater reliability. So there was a lot of work that went into it to, to make sure that it was working. So our reliability scores were great. They're around 0 0.91, to, uh, 0 0.88 to 0 0.91. Uh, and what that means is that you can very confidently say that if I go in to do an assessment or Chelsea goes in to do an assessment, uh, you're going to have the same ROSA score. You can also be certain that if I went in on Monday and then again on Thursday and nothing had changed, you'd get the same score as well. So this graph here that I want to kind of orient you to, uh, you can see uh, the, the black line represents the amount of discomfort a person is experiencing based off their questionnaire. And along the, uh, the horizontal axis, that's the ROSA score out of 10. So once we got to 5, we saw a significant spike there in the amount of reported discomfort. So what we've, we've come up with is essentially a threshold limit. So if you do your ROSA assessment, you get a score of 5 or higher. We're flagging that as a, a red job, and we are going to recommend that the ergonomist go in and make some changes as, as soon as possible. So this was published in, uh, in 2012 in Applied Ergonomics, and it, uh, it caught a lot of uh, momentum uh, spread around the world. I think it's now in... Uh, 22 to 25 different countries it's being taught. Uh, and it's, um, or I think, somewhere around 13, um, 13 organizations are using it as an office ergo like, method of controlling things. <clears throat> now, uh, it's all well and good. We've got this great tool, but we still needed an ergonomist to go in and do this actual work. So our next, uh, our next research venture into ROSA was to see how self-assessments compared to uh, these trained observer assessments. So did you actually need your ergonomist to go in and do this assessment, or could we reliably send this tool to somebody and get a reasonable uh, score? So what we wanted to do was uh, to compare and see if there was any significant differences between our expert scores and our worker reported scores, and if they were significantly correlated uh, with greater than point, uh, an R of greater than 0.5, we'd consider it a, a valid measure. Probably more importantly in this experiment, we also wanted to see if ROSA could be used to help workers make reasonable changes to their workplace over the course of a month. 
So we had people uh, do an assessment once a week over the span of four weeks, complete ROSA, uh, and complete a discomfort questionnaire to see what they could do. So the original version of ROSA was a pen and paper checklist. Uh, this was the first iteration of essentially the ergo tools version of ROSA. And what people would do is they would, they would watch a video. You can see here, hosted through YouTube. Um, they would watch that video, get some, some information on how they could adjust their workstation, make those adjustments, and then, and then uh, go through their entire assessment. So uh, what's identified here is our fixed scores. So the fixed scores, like I was mentioning, you can only select one of those, but then there's additional scores down here that can be added on as well. So what we found was that the, uh, the expert scores were a little bit higher than the worker scores. And what we kind of trace that back to is that in our original version, we used these mannequins as uh, our, our way of uh, demonstrating what these ideal postures were or what these postures in the office were. People got a little bit thrown off by that, so we've changed it since to actually use real photos of workers, and that's helped improve things. Uh, so for the final score and for our mouse and keyboard scores, we saw a bit of a discrepancy. Now, as an assessment tool for the chair and for the monitor and telephone, uh, Rosa was bang on regardless of who was doing the assessment. So we saw that there was no, no actual effect for the, uh, the person doing the assessment for the chair, the monitor, and the telephone. So very reasonably uh, accurate scores for those. We also saw very uh, so moderate uh, correlations between those two scores the worker score and the expert score, the ergonomist score. So once again, uh, what we were seeing here is that people were assessing their offices with reasonable validity with respect to an actual you know, trained professional who had done this assessment. Now what really got me excited here was, uh, was looking at how those ROSA scores changed over the span of four weeks. So they started in week number one here, a uh, little bit higher, close to four on average, and we had 55 people involved in this study. And over the span of those four weeks, the, uh, the scores dropped, the ROSA scores dropped, meaning that our risk level in the office was dropping over that time. People were able to actually use these videos, to use this tool, and make uh, substantial changes to their office to improve their ergonomics. At the same time, uh, this red line represents the discomfort levels, and we saw that after the first week, uh, people made a very reasonable change in their workstation and it improved their comfort while at work. And just kind of anecdotally, the one thing I noticed that people were saying was, wow, I, it was that easy. I, I, I couldn't believe it was just something that simple. All I had to do was adjust my chair. Uh, just so many people are, are left without knowing how to use some of the equipment that they have. So this was just a very uh, simple way to give people an idea of how to actually make those changes to their, to their workstation. And after week two, um, those discomfort levels kind of just plateaued, but we were very happy to see that they did drop off along with those risk uh, scores. So this paper was uh, accepted in uh, occupational ergonomics back in 2013. And we, uh, we definitely um, wanted to make some improvement. One thing that we saw that was an interesting finding in this study is that if we gave workers uh, feedback on how to do their assessment, uh, it actually kind of threw them off. So they were better at doing their assessment if they were just left to kind of figure it out based off the ROSA system. So now uh, the third research study that we did on ROSA was to actually once again look at uh, the involvement of the ergonomist and did the ergonomist actually need to get out to the workstation. So the, the main uh, focus for this research was actually to look at um, the, the type of jobs where somebody is an ergonomist in a central location and they've got uh, you know, workers that are four hours away, um, they're working in remote locations but they need an office ergonomics assessment. Could we get some decent photos of their workstation and then rely on our, uh, our, our ergonomist to do the assessment just through pictures? So we, we, uh, we got five um, set photos. So what they were, it was a kind of a sagittal plane of the person sitting in their chair, another one of them reaching for their telephone, uh, a photo from above uh, showing some of their upper limb postures while typing and any sort of rotation of the neck. 
Another photo uh, just showing the person interacting with their phone where they're using that neck and shoulder hold that we all hate so much. And then another picture uh, depicting what their posture was while mousing. And once again, uh, we were able to get very reasonable assessments between a comparison between the photo assessment and an actual in-person assessment. So uh, there really was no, no difference between those. So we can say reasonably, if you have a remote uh, worker that needs an office ergonomics assessment, what you could easily do is just get, uh, get them to have some, somebody in their office take some photos, send them to you, and you could get a decent ROSA assessment. Or you could rely on them to do their own self-assessment. <coughs> So the current state of ROSA, uh, I think we now are going to have four um, different languages. I was looking at it last night. Uh, I assume they're okay. I, my Turkish isn't so strong. Um, but there's a Turkish version, uh, there's a Malay version, uh, there's a uh, Portuguese version, and I believe a French version now too. So ROSA is uh, out there in, in many different languages. Uh, if you look at this map, um, the different dots on there represent all the different countries and different locations where people are using ROSA. So it's exciting to see something like this uh, kind of spread, spread all around the world and, and get people actually using it. So now we're uh, at our final stage of, of ROSA's development. And that's coming up with a, a, a good tool that allows us to have, uh, have our phones out, do an assessment, and, and get a report. So this is what office, uh, the Office Ergo aspect, the ROSA aspect of Ergo Tools now looks like. So this is the, uh, the chair section for assessing the, the height of the chair. And you just pick one of these things here. Uh, and you could even assess how you're sitting in here if you had uh, the Ergo Tools mm -hmm. up on your phone. And then select uh, any of those options. So there's one of the first one, any of the second ones uh, that have the, the square checkbox. We also look at the, uh, the depth of the seat pan, as well as the armrests, uh, the position of the armrests, as well as the, uh, the height of the armrests. And then we, we look at uh, the backrest as well. The monitor, uh, we're looking primarily at the height of the monitor, uh, the distance to reach to the monitor, uh, whether or not there's glare on the screen, if people are relying on documents uh, and the position of those documents. And then another big one that we're factoring in right now uh, is, is the amount of time that is spent uh, interacting with these devices. Sit to stand is a big, uh, a big thing these days and trying to figure out uh, how that impacts comfort. And what we've recommended with Rosa is that if you said that you know you've been sitting for four hours a day, but you take an hour to to go and uh, go and and stand, you just subtract that, and that's how you would modify things in the uh, the score system there. But we're also trying to factor this in in some other research. The telephone. Uh, this is kind of showing some of the uh, the development over the years. Uh, it's not as common nowadays for people to use their, their phone as it was even, you know, four years ago. Uh, if they are using their phone in their workplace, a lot of times it's a cell phone. And in that case, there is usually a speakerphone option. But what we're trying to evaluate with the phone here is the, trying to determine if, uh, if people are using that neck and shoulder hold and how far they have to reach to their phone. With the mouse, uh, we're trying to look at the posture of the, uh, the upper arm and the posture of the wrist. So are people having to, r to raise their arm up to another surface to do any sort of mousing? Uh, are they having to use a kind of a constricted pinch grip on one of those small laptop mice? Uh, is there a hard surface in front that's causing any compression of the wrist? Those sorts of things. And then finally, uh, the keyboard section, which once again is looking at uh, are people having to shrug their shoulders while they're typing? Uh, do they have deviated wrists while they're typing using like a laptop or something of that nature? Uh, and if there's any sort of uh, a hard surface that's causing any impingement uh, in front of the, the worker. So what we get to at the end is, uh, is this score. So it's a one to 10 score uh, and then the ROSA score here will turn red if it's over five or higher to indicate this is a, one of our high risk type uh, workstations. Now, the, uh, the way ROSA works uh, in Ergo Tools and 
it's, uh, it's designed to give you a, a detailed report at the end. So you go through your full assessment and then it will spit out a report at the end that's been customized to your, your assessment you've just done. So it's not just generic information uh, that is, is just put in there. Uh, each of these risk factors that are identified and the possible recommendations to fix them are based off your actual assessment results. So if it's perfect, uh, you'll end up seeing nothing. If there's a lot of issues, you'll see a whole bunch of text there. But this can actually be used. Um, it's, it's set up so that as soon as you finish it, you can print it off. Uh, you can save it as a PDF and you'll have access to that report for your office. So in the event that um, you, know, you do have a remote employee, uh, they, can, they can do the ROSA assessment, they can send you the report and you have a lot better idea as to some of the issues they might be facing. And in the future we're going to get this so that it can be more customized uh, based off of who's logged in. Um, if you have some specific wording that you like to use in your workplace, we're going to add that in too as well. Now what I've been uh, working on with some of our, our clients at uh, OCAL in, in Hamilton is coming up with ways to kind of prioritize their own office. So what we've done uh, is we go in, we do a presentation on office ergonomics and using ROSA and then say to the people, okay, now go back to your desk, do your assessment and here's a form that we want you to fill out at the end. And it's essentially they just type out what their scores were and they put it into this Google form that we've customized for their company. Then Google, uh, the form itself, spits out this nice, neat report to give our, our uh, administrators a better idea as to some of the issues that are happening in their office. And you know, in this case, you know, if you had a, a whole lot of uh, workers, you had 100 people and you're trying to figure out who needs chairs on the next budget round, this would be a, an actual quantified method of, of stating, you know, there's a higher risk in this group here. And what this, uh, this, this Excel worksheet will do was actually prioritize who had the highest assessments and which departments in your organization had the, uh, the highest scores. And if you go to the ErgoTools website, this is available to download there as well. So we've got a bunch of tools that can all be worked with uh, and used together uh, to kind of manage your office ergonomics program using ROSA and using ErgoTools. And you can see here uh, just some of the prioritizing. So in this, this situation, uh, it just it ranks based off of uh, the ROSA final score and gives you an idea of um, who had the highest score. So if you were going to go make some changes, that's, that's where you should start. So ROSA is kind of used to triage uh, your office ergonomics. And um, some of the, uh, the best uses I've seen of it are in organizations that have just you know, thousands of workers uh, and two ergonomists and they're trying their best to just keep their head above water and they, they use ROSA to prioritize things and focus their efforts a little bit more uh, clearly. So to get to ErgoTools, uh, on our awesome uh, OCAL website, thanks to Linda back there doing great work with the website, um, Ergo Tools is down in the bottom right hand corner, uh, it just says ergonomics tools, you can click on that and it will take you uh, right to the, uh, the Ergo Tools. I also wanted to highlight some of the other um, initiatives that we've had with uh, MSD prevention and identification. Uh, Pain Point is an app that allows you to, uh, to track discomfort and provide the worker with feedback and possible changes to their, their workstation. Uh, it's available for download uh, in the Google Play Store uh, as well as iTunes and BlackBerry World. Uh, it, takes a, it takes a little bit of time to go through, but once you've gone through it, it gives you really detailed information on the types of things that you want to be focusing on to, to make reasonable impacts in your, op, in your, your workplace. Now, uh, one of the, uh, the main problems that we typically see in any workplace these days with uh, some of the more modern stressors of, of your job security and your job satisfaction uh, are some of the mental health challenges that we've, uh, we've found. And we, we have another app that was kind of piloted or, or really driven by, by Val and John Odyke uh, in our Hamilton Clinic to measure workplace stress. Now it's a kind of a distilled down version of a big group survey, uh, but this jobs, uh, this measure workplace stress app can give you a good idea of a baseline of, of stress levels. And uh, if, years ago, we kind of just put our head in the sand and said, 
okay, there's no way to quantify these things, so we're, we're not worrying about them. We're going to try and control what we can control. But now there's some reasonable tools out there to actually give you an idea of, of stress levels in the workplace. And to ignore those completely, um, there's really no excuse for it anymore. So I'll give you the web link here. Um, I know I'm a little bit short on time, uh, but if we have any questions now, I'd be happy to, to take some of those. Uh, once again, uh, the Ergo Tools link, my email, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. So the question is, how can Rosa be adapted to the sit-to-stand workstations? And right now, what's being recommended is that you uh, lower your score by modifying uh, the amount of duration you're exposed to something. So uh, the way it would work is you do your chair assessment. Um, you do your chair assessment in a way that uh, is reflective of how you'd be when you're sitting. But then at the end, when you're filling out how much time you spend in your chair, you would just deduct from that. So if normally you spend four hours a day in your chair, but you're doing sit to stand for an hour, make that three, and that would change your, your score there. Um, as with, with anything, it's more about your variability and your posture. So uh, how variable you are would influence some of those duration scores, and that's kind of how we've recommended to use it at this point. Um, so the, the, the question's about uh, are there any assessment tools for truck drivers for sitting? Uh, I can't give you a name uh, right now because it's uh, escaping me, but there are some a lot of seating evaluation tools in uh, motor vehicles. Um, I know there was one, uh, it was out of the University of Windsor, and it was uh, probably 10 years ago, and it was a seating comfort uh, score type tool for truck drivers. Um, there are tools out there, but at, off the top of my head, I can't think of the name of them right now. So um, once again, this is like, this was developed and tested in 2012. And you don't think that's a long time ago, but it, like at the time, uh, and if you look at some of those images, there's like CRT monitors in them. Like that has totally disappeared in that short, short span of time. And the in, in, uh, implementation of tablets and cell phones that uh, some of our other ergos will talk about today will address that. Right now, what I recommend is you, you look at it in the highest risk position. So if somebody's having to twist to look at a monitor, that's what you put into your ROSA tool. Um, but there has been research that has shown that the double monitors lead to more neck discomfort. Uh, and there, there's pros and cons. You're not having to do any sort of like the deep flexion of your neck when you're evaluating uh, or you're looking at uh, documents because you've got the two screens. Uh, but it is a challenge. And uh, right now, um, we have ongoing research on how to integrate like your cell phone and your tablet and your laptop into Rosa. And the other one is how to integrate the multi-monitor setups. So uh, the nice thing about Ergo Tools is that it's not a downloadable app. So we don't have to worry about updating or anything like that. Um, you'll go there one day and we'll have it in there and it'll be ready for you to use. I got lots of times, more questions. <laughs> The, for the people on the web, everyone has their hands up, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a resounding, resounding uh, <laughs> success. Uh, a, a lot of times, the challenge is that these, these tools get very, um, <clears throat> very technical, or there's some sort of math you have to do, or uh, they're difficult to interpret. And what we're really trying to focus on with, with ergo tools is to make these things a lot easier to interpret and to make them so that uh, 
as many people as they can can use them. So something like RULA, something like ROSA, and even something like the, the strain index, knowing that they exist is probably the biggest part of the battle because if you just look at them, you just read what's being said in them, uh, chances are the general layperson can use them. And uh, the most important aspect of recognizing hazards is first getting, getting people to actually uh, quantify some of them. Because once you've quantified them, then you can do something about them. You can measure your changes. So ErgoTools is our step in that direction to make that an easier thing to do.